Hey sugar geeks, Liz here. Tis the season for sourdough once again, and you know what that means, sourdough discard. Today we're gonna be using our sourdough discard to make the most amazing sourdough donuts you've ever had. Coming up next on The Sugar Geek Show. I love using sourdough discard in all kinds of recipes from muffins to quick breads, even in cakes. But today we're gonna be making these delicious donuts. Yes, we are in my new kitchen and we're still in the process of building it out just the way we want. But for now, this is what we call home. <laughs> so follow along on that journey if you wanna see more on how we're making our studio into our dream studio, right? So the secret ingredient to these donuts is the sourdough starter. If you have no idea what sourdough starter is, you might wanna check out my sourdough starter tutorial and probably make some sourdough bread while you're at it. But if you're gonna be making sourdough, you're gonna have sourdough starter. So there's tons of recipes on the internet that use that leftover sourdough starter when you discard half and you feed it. You don't wanna waste that, that stuff is delicious. First thing we wanna do is measure out our starter. I'm using about a cup, but you could use less or more depending on how much discard you have. It's kind of its own ingredient, like a, like a flavor, like cinnamon or something. It's, it's just, ugh, so good. If you wanna check out my favorite sourdough discard recipe, check out my sourdough pikelets. I'm feeling really lazy today, so we're literally gonna just use a hand mixer and it kinda, you know, you, you could do this by hand if you wanted to. You don't even have to bust out the KitchenAid. Okay, so now we're just gonna cream together our butter and our sugar, make it nice and fluffy. Incorporate that air. This is what gives the cake donuts that cakey texture. This is a cake donut with sourdough discard. We're not using the, the yeast in the sourdough discard to really like, like leaven this at all. It's just literally for flavor because the discard has already risen and then it's fallen down. So it's not really doing anything and we're gonna use this batter right away, we're not gonna let it rise. So you might be like, well, how's the sourdough time to work? We're, not, we're using baking powder. The sourdough discards just for flavor. <laughs> All right, then now we're gonna add in our eggs. We just put one in there, mix it up a little bit, and then add the second one. Make sure your eggs are room temperature, otherwise they will curdle the butter and it'll just like all separate it and look like cottage cheese. <laughs> Yeah, all room temperature ingredients, butter's room temperature, milk is room temperature, eggs room temperature. People always forget about the milk. All right, here comes the easy part. You guys ready? We're just gonna add the rest of the ingredients in and mix it until it makes a dough. So we've got our sourdough starter, milk, baking powder, baking soda, salt, vanilla, and nutmeg. Then we're just gonna mix on low until combined. Now we're gonna add the flour and mix just until combined. You don't wanna overmix the dough or the donuts will become really tough and chewy. We want them to be nice and fluffy. All right, let's put a little bit of flour on the surface here. We have our very kind of sticky soft dough. It's okay. And sprinkle a little bit of flour on top. And we're just gonna fold this a couple times, just like if you were making biscuits to just smooth out the dough so it's not too shaggy. You don't wanna like really work it cause then your, your donuts will start to get tough. And if you wanna just make regular old cake donuts, you can check out my cake donut recipe from last week. No sourdough starter required. Just gonna kind of flatten this dough down with my hands. We're shooting for about a half an inch thick. You don't even have to get out your rolling pin for this. It's got a little bit of wheat in it from the sourdough starter, which I think also adds to the flavor. Got my little frying station set up now. Got my oil heating. I've got a cooling rack on top of a sheet pan so that the grease can drain away from the donuts. And if you watched last week's episode of Cake Donuts, you know there's a whole bunch of different types of oil you can use. You can check out that blog post if you wanna learn more about that. But I am using lard. Lard is very tasty <laughs> when it comes to fried food. It's not the healthiest, but we're not going for healthy. We're eating donuts for goodness sakes. Uh, alternatives are Crisco, which is a little bit healthier than lard, or uh, vegetable oil, or like a canola oil. So it's up to you what you wanna use. Go forth and fry the things. It's gonna take about 15 minutes to get up to temperature. I'm using my donut cutter to cut my donuts. You could also just use like a circle cutter. If that's all you have, you don't have to get a special donut cutter. This is about a four inch donut 
I used a, a circle cutter when I was testing and it was three inches. So I had slightly smaller donuts, but then I could fit more than one in my pan, which was nice. Fun fact, as we were testing this recipe, we noticed that it actually does not take any longer to cook this larger donut. It still was about two minutes on one side and then 30 seconds to one minute on the other side. I mostly go by color though. That's the nice thing about using the fry daddy instead of like a, a pot with a thermometer is it just kind of regulates the oil temperature for me and I'm always kind of getting consistent donuts. Whereas if you're using like a pot and a thermometer, then you kind of just have to guess and you might have a couple that are a little bit browner. And once they start getting overdone, they start kind of collecting oil and getting greasy. So if you have like a fry daddy, check grandma's closet. She might have one in there. <laughs> everybody, I had one of these when I was a kid. I think everybody had one growing up in uh, the 80s and the 90s. I'm just kind of rolling up the leftover dough. The donuts are not as pretty, but I am not about to waste this. Just a little safety tip in case any kids are watching this. Make sure you have an adult who's helping you fry something. This is extremely hot and dangerous. It's not something that you know young kids should be using without supervision. Frying food is fun, but it's a little bit dangerous. <laughs> I tried air frying these donuts and it didn't work out so well. So I'm definitely gonna be testing some more baked donut recipes, which will be coming out soon. All right, I am going to use my uh, Thermoworks uh, infrared gun to just check and see if this oil is hot enough uh, since I don't have any sort of external temperature to tell me. I have a link for this in the description below if you're interested. A little, it's a little bit low, got a couple more minutes before it's hot enough. You don't want to heat your donuts when the oil is too cold because what happens is it doesn't develop that crisp outer layer fast enough and then the donut basically just fills up full of oil and becomes very heavy and greasy. And if your oil is too hot, A, you could start a fire, <laughs> and B, um, it's going to burn the outside of your donut before it even cooks in the center. So that's why having a fry daddy with kind of a built-in uh, control for the heat is really nice or at the very least a thermometer that you can clip to the side of your pot and track the uh, temperature. But these little guns are really nice too because you can just quickly test and see how hot the oil is. 340, we're almost there. Shoot between 360, 375. I'm using this to strain my donuts. Um, the Fry Daddy actually came with like this heat proof sort of plastic spatula thing that would work really well too. You know, you might see like your grandma or somebody just like put the dough right into the to the oil that way. Um, if there's any sort of water or, you know, moisture on this dough, that's immediately going to start like bubbling up and spitting and you can get some burns that way. So it's always a good idea to put the dough just on top of your little skimmer and uh, just put it in that way. That way, if any sort of spitting happens, it doesn't go onto your arm. Depending on how big your donuts are, you could fit two in there, but unfortunately my fried eyes is a little bit too small, so I can only fit one donut in there at a time. Maybe a couple of the donut holes you could do. If this wasn't for a blog, I would probably honestly just put two in there and one would just be kind of under the other one or just use a smaller cutter. So roughly about two minutes uh, on the first side and then one minute. Look at that beauty. I'll let the oil drain for a few seconds over my pot and then place it onto the wire rack to cool down and for the oil to drain. These look so cute. A couple of them kind of split, you know, I don't know, they're homemade. I don't know why that happens, <laughs> but. Mm. Okay, now we're gonna glaze these. We just have some powdered sugar, a little bit of milk, or you can use water. And you know, the thickness, is really up to you. I like kind of a thicker glaze. If you wanted to use like a chocolate glaze or um, powdered sugar, cinnamon sugar, anything like that, you totally can. I just think that the traditional glaze tastes the best with the sourdough. So it, it just adds a tiny bit of sweetness, but it doesn't overpower it. And if you want to take the glaze up a notch, you can uh, you can make it into chai glaze. You could add a little bit of orange peel or lemon, something to just kind of like, you know, bring it up a couple notches, but just the straight glaze is even delicious. All right, we're just gonna take our donut, give it a little dunk, lift up, and we have that beautiful shiny glaze. You can even add food coloring to this too if you wanted 
like a blue or a pink. If you want it to be like a really bright color, I would suggest adding a tiny bit of white food coloring and making the glaze a little bit thicker so that it doesn't run off so much. But I like just kind of a thin layer of glaze, honestly. Mmm. The inside of the donut is extremely tender and very moist. Super, super soft. Definitely lives up to its cakey name. The outside is so crisp, and that's because these are fresh. You know, after 24 hours, they're definitely gonna soften up a little bit, but right out of the fryer, my God. This is so incredibly amazing. You get a little bit of the sweetness from the glaze, but it's just, this would be like a great thing to make for a breakfast for like a large gathering. Just everybody could have like a little sourdough donut, a little cup of coffee, like you're in heaven. I'm in heaven. <laughs> it almost feels like it's healthy. Sourdough donut, right? <laughs> so that's it guys. That is how you turn a little bit of sourdough discard into the most amazing sourdough donuts you've ever had, I swear. You can change up the flavors, you can change up the extracts, make them the way that you wanna make them. Go crazy. Thanks everyone for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you wanna see more videos like this one and I'll see you guys next week. Bye. They're coming with me.